सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली For this episode of Cut the Clutter, I am choosing or I am daring to go beyond my comfort zone. My comfort zone lies in politics, diplomacy, international affairs, defense, at best political economy. But I am going beyond that in talking about currencies and what's happening today to the global currency debate and also the politics of currencies. Because I notice a clamor which, frankly, I don't understand. I don't understand in terms of political analysis. I see a clamor in India also that the dollar. first of all the belief that the dollar is declining which is not fully untrue it is declining but not as rapidly or as as catastrophically as many people seem to believe and second second this idea that maybe the decline of the dollar is a good thing for india and countries like india once again if you really stretch it then people think oh in place of dollar some virtuous new currency will come in like that will smell like roses or that will be dipped in some holy water of whichever river that you you pray to in any country obviously not not the potomac or not the mississippi uh, a non american river and that will be that currency will set the world right first of all no such thing is going to happen and i will give you some facts and evidence to indicate to you what it means second again another idea which is a fantasy and i am saying fantasy up front which is an opinion and i will show you how as we go ahead fantasy that this august brics countries will meet in south africa and they'll come up with a new currency and that currency will be the panacea that will then liberate us from the tyranny of the dollar which the americans the ugly americans militarized or weaponized in 2022 as the russians came invading ukraine now the fact is that the americans did militarize or weaponize the dollar and that has caused concern among many countries but usually these concerns will be caused among countries which see themselves in the short run or maybe in the medium run or even in the long run being at odds with the american system or the american alliance system that essentially first of all will be a country like china then there'll be iran and they, then there might be a few more at the same time some other countries will join in this noise also to thumb their noses at america because everybody wants to also get a better bargaining position but look at the facts look at the facts first of all let the clamor be there how close is the dollar to self destruction now i rely on a whole bunch of writings but i will share with you an article by ruchir sharma our favorite columnist in financial times who says that look this is an odd situation an odd juncture where the dollar is rising in value but looks vulnerable and the reason he says it looks vulnerable is that that the two decade experience shows that dollar while it is rising right now it's peaking rather than rallying further and that is because of the past record the past record since the 1970 he says shows that the dollar goes through a seven year cycle right it has a rise for seven years then it declines in this year this rise has continued for 11 years so maybe the dollar is due for a correction also he says that when a country's current account deficit stays above 5% over a period of time that is where it, its currency gets into trouble the us so far has avoided that trap but the us now is getting closer to that trap so the us has breached this limit of current account deficit being 5% or crossing 5% of gdp only once since 1960 he says and that was in 2001 otherwise the us has stayed there whereas he also says that us dollar still has a lot of resilience countries that suffered because of this limit being breached consistently were countries in europe countries that in fact were described at that point as pigs countries that is portugal italy greece spain add throw ireland into the same mix but but the us has not had that issue the fact however is the fact however is that the bulk of the global reserves are still in american currency and that is a very important thing so if you look at the reality of the world then 90% of the global trade is transacted in dollar even now now putin after his last summit which he jinping said 
that now we are talking of, we are thinking of doing all our business with China in Renminbi Yuan, that's a Chinese currency, and also transacting all our business or bulk of our business with Asian, African, Latin American countries in the Chinese Yuan. So the Russians now under pressure are, are now leaning on the Chinese. So they are becoming part of the Chinese Yuan system and supporting it. Just think for a moment, take a deep breath and think for a moment, would India, how would India like to be part of that system? If India's great friend, Russia, uh, Vladimir Putin, no less, whose country calls its relationship with India a very specially privileged strategic one, invites India or nudges India to join a new currency system led by China, by the Chinese Yuan, think about how India might react to it. Because India did not even join RCEP, which is Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. In my view, a great opportunity it was because that is, while China is a major partner there, there but th there are many other East Asian economies which are very, very powerful, which would have balanced China. But India is not willing anymore to go to any new grouping where China has a strong overbearing overhang. India will not go there. So if India will not go there, think of the possibility or think of the impossibility of India becoming a member of a new currency system led by the Chinese. Now look at what the Chinese have done. The fact is that Chinese have taken out a lot of their reserves from American dollar. But where has that money gone? The Chinese have taken a bulk of that money back to their own currency. That is the yuan. Yuan at the same time has not been doing brilliantly in the world. Nobody quite trusts it. In fact, you see even now the latest IMF chart and you will see it on your screen, courtesy the IMF. If you see the, uh, the IMF chart of a total of about $12 trillion that the world's countries, about 149 countries surveyed, hold in foreign exchange reserves of those countries, not even 5% of that amount is today held in renminbi yuan and once again i will show you another chart that is quite telling that of the 336 billion dollars equivalent of reserves that various countries in the world hold in chinese currency that is renminbi yuan about one third about one third in 2022 mid 2022 about one third that is 105 billion dollars equivalent was held by none else than Putin's Russia. So th that is the currency that Russia is fleeing to because they've been cut out of the dollar system. Is that a reason for the rest of the world also go to? I don't think so. And at least the data doesn't show this. If you see this chart from, from IMF that gives you the split of the various countries who have their money their reserves in Renminbi Yuan, there is Russia and there are some others, Switzerland is there, Brazil is there, South Africa is there, a little bit, just maybe a few billion dollars each and then the rest of the world, uh, in fact the rest of the world has about 184 billion dollars will be, which, which will be a lot of chota chota uh, economies in Africa, parts of Asia, maybe Pakistan will have some of it, we don't have that detail but the fact is that all of the reserves held by the world in Chinese currency are about 60%. All of, the, all of those add up to about 60% of India's total reserves at the moment, which is about $578 billion when we last counted. Also, just to add to our GK, my colleague Sharad Raghavan, who's our economics editor, he tells me that of this, India was holding foreign currency assets amounting to 509, that is $509.7 billion. As of March 24, there was $45.5 billion held in gold, 18.4 in special drawing rights, add, all of it adding up to $578.8 billion. But all the data and information tells us that a bulk of Indian reserves are held in US dollar because that's the currency that India trusts. So people who run the RBI, people who control India's reserves and people who control the levers of India's economy and government of India's treasury, they are much smarter, much, much smarter than people on social media, people on popular media, not just social media, in fact, people on mainstream media, who now have this fantasy about the decline of the dollar and everybody shifting to some mythical new currency, if not to the Chinese Yuan, because you know for sure that India is not going anywhere near the Yuan. And at the same time, what other currency can come up? I will tell you some more details on that also by way of analysis and data. So IMF also tells us that three-fourths of the shift away 
from the US dollar. So there is a shift away from the US dollar over the past 20 years. In 1999, see this chart from IMF. In 1999, about 72% of global reserves, worldwide reserves were held in dollar. Today, this has come down to 59% and may be declining further, but very slowly. But of the shift that's taken place, three-fourths of the shift away from the dollar has taken to other safe currencies. And what are, the, what are these? Australian and Canadian dollars, Swedish krona and South Korean won. Very few have come to Renminbi Yuan. And very few have gone to their own currencies. If anything, renminbi yuan, the Chinese have gone back to their own currency. They've take, pulled money out of the US dollar and gone to their own currency because they are now afraid of the US militarizing or weaponizing the dollar against them. Should they decide to do something funny with Taiwan? And who knows, should they decide to do something funny with India as well? Just last week, they gave us a shock by renaming these places in Arunachal Pradesh and making all the other noises that make us that made us not just uncomfortable but that that made us worry a great deal so the money has gone out of the dollar but it has gone to other western currencies western currencies and one currency in the east which is the south korean won so south korean won south korea is now trusted as a stable country democracy so on and so forth then some countries are dealing among themselves in their own currencies Putin, for example, after the summit said that, you know, our dealings with China will be in renminbi yuan. He's shifting more and more of his money to renminbi yuan. He has good reasons. But he's saying that his dealings and China's dealings with countries in what is loosely described as the global south, a term I don't like, that will be now in, in renminbi yuan. I can guarantee to you India is going to take no part of it. In fact, India might have its own system of dealing with Russia. But India and Russia have dealt with each other through each other's currencies for a long time. In fact, even while Soviet Union was there, there was a rupee-ruble trading system, right? So India can, India can figure out a variant because India wants to continue trading with Russia, not only to buy cheaper oil, but also India has many other strategic long-term relationships. India might be wanting to pivot away, but it will take a long time to pivot away when 95-97% of all the main battle tanks of your army are of Russian slash Soviet origin. So India will find its own way. Again, look at this chart from IMF on the total reserves in the world. And the, these give you a quarterly sp split, a quarter by quarter split or quarter se quarter tak QSQT split. You can see that the dollar has a problem because over time you might see some decline in the amount of money people are holding in dollar, but not that much. And in fact, there is very good analysis. So this IMF paper says, in conclusion, that they've done a regression analysis. And the conclusion is that the holders, the countries, favor the currencies of those countries who are known for good governance, economic stability, and sound finances. Now, does China pass any of those tests? If you believe so, you've been drinking something you should not be, not at least in daytime, right? Uh, and the truth is, no country in the world buys into this mythology except Russia. But Russia right now has its own problems and its own compulsions. Once again, see this other chart from IMF. That's a pie chart, a simple pie chart. And see, see how much of the reserves are still in US dollars, how much are in the euro. In fact, if I go back to the chart I'd shown you earlier, the bar chart, you will see that while the dollar has declined from about 72% to 59%, the other major currencies, that is the euro, yen, Great Britain pound, etc., they remain constant, 20%, 7%, 5%, like that. And there is something that's risen, that is others, that is risen, but risen to 10%, of which maybe a little less than half is the Chinese currency. So I'm also sharing with you the article that Ruchi Sharma has written in FT, again, see that article. He's expressing concerns about the dollar and he's pointing in a particular direction, but that direction is not catastrophic. That is not catastrophe. Now, the Chinese have a fantasy. Chinese want their currency to be a global currency and now replacing the dollar. But how can that happen? They have to do a few things. And once again, watch what Farid Zakaria is saying. I'm also sharing a link of his opinion on the dollar on CNN with you. What he's saying is that if the Chinese really want people, countries to shift to their currencies, they have to do the following. They have to lift capital controls. They have to 
make the yuan convertible, how would they do it? If they do it, then they are going completely contrary to Xi Jinping's worldview on politics, on political economy, on the way his party controls the country, because then you have to open up the country. You cannot do it. You cannot do it because you want to sustain yourself in power forever. And if you want to sustain yourself in power forever, who's going to trust your currency? Because you play with your currency all the time. In fact, I go back to other data. Uh, this one is from Richard's article that on index of capital account openness, China ranks 106 in the world out of 165. So a country that ranks so low on the index of capital account openness, which country, which country in its right mind is going to take its money to it unless that country has the gun put to its head. And that country, by the way, is Russia because it has the gun put to its head by Joe Biden and that gun is called the US dollar. Now, the other final fantasy, the final fantasy is that BRICS now will produce their own currency. So first of all, please try and understand what BRICS is. BRICS had no logic to it, no political, diplomatic, strategic, economic, financial, geographic, geostrategic logic to it. Maybe it had the logic of an acronym, right? BRICS sounds interesting, right? But otherwise there was no logic. This is, this is something that some researchers at an investment bank thought up at some point of time in the peak season of emerging markets. This was a season so good for emerging markets that even Russia was seen as an emerging markets, right? Russia has not been an emerging market now for a very long time. Now, BRICS will produce its own currency. First of all, there is nothing in common in BRICS. In fact, if you look at the five countries of BRICS, they all have serious differences. Okay, India and Russia have some relationship. Russia and China have a very close relationship. The Russian-Chinese close relationship actually runs contrary to India's interests. Brazil doesn't particularly have a strategic, economic, geographical, geostrategic relationship with any of the others. South Africa is too small to matter. It's just there. Now, if they were to produce a currency, think about what that currency will be. And the best way to try and understand what that currency will be is to see the relative strength of these various economies in the BRICS system. So if you see in the BRICS system, at this point, the Chinese GDP, the Chinese GDP, all nominal. I, I deal in nominal, not in, not in PPP. PPP is for fancy arguments, right? But nominal is what matters. That is the equivalent of the money somebody has in the bank. PPP is what you can do with the bank. So I'm not going there. So the Chinese economy right now is about $16 trillion. $16 trillion. India is about $3.3 trillion. The latest, Russia is $1.6 trillion. Similarly, Brazil, bigger population, much bigger population than Russia, is also $1.6 trillion. And South Africa, it's less than half a trillion dollars. All of these add up to just over $7 trillion, if at all. In fact, I am rounding it off to make it 7. It might end up being a bit less than that. That is 3.3 plus 1.6 plus 1.6 plus 0.4, right? All of it is just about $7 trillion. So it's four countries with $7 trillion of economy, one country, one big daddy with $16 trillion of economy. That's the daddy that's going after us. That's going after India, right? That's going after India, all guns blazing. And I see this fantasy about this new currency by BRICS, right? Where every country will be equal. And this will be the fantastic new currency that delivers us from the tyranny of the dollar. Of course, every system in which China is involved, every country is equal, isn't it? I'm being sarcastic. I have to say that I have to qualify that I'm being sarcastic because these days people tend to be very, very serious and somehow lose their sense of humor. So finally, once again, you can call it the BRICS currency, some currency, mythical currency of the global south. The fact is, it's a case of Xi Jinping telling us, or walk into my parlor. I am having none of it. And I'm quite sure our country is having none of it. Ask me, I would instead put the gun on my head. I would instead go with Dogecoin instead. Whatever my doubts about cryptocurrency, at least that won't threaten my sovereignty.